There are only 10 NBA championships in a decade. And the Chicago Bulls won six of them in the 90s. Of course, Michael Jordan was a major part of that success, but the Bulls were more than just a one-man show. If Jordan was Batman, then Scottie Pippen was Robin, a hard-nosed, versatile player who was as much of an elite defender as he was a talented scorer. Fittingly, much of the second episode of The Last Dance was dedicated to him, the Bulls' second best player. And as you heard in the clip just then, Pippen was so important to the team that Jordan calls him his best teammate of all time, and he says that whenever they speak Michael Jordan, they should also speak Scottie Pippen. And yet, if we were to watch that whole episode in its entirety, we would also hear Jordan accuse Pippen of being selfish. Why? Well, for that, we need to rewind a little bit. Scotty Pippen was born and raised in Hamburg, Arkansas, a small town with a population of only 3,500 people. At the youngest of 12 children, Pippen grew up poor, and amidst severe circumstances, both his father and one of his brothers were in wheelchairs, the result of a stroke in the case of his father and a schoolyard accident in the case of his brother. The family couldn't afford to send anyone to college and it was only after badgering a coach at the University of Central Arkansas that Scotty went from being the equipment manager to a walk-on player on the team and eventually someone who would catch the eye of NBA scouts. These humble beginnings in small-town poverty were in part what motivated Pippen to sign an ill-advised seven-year, $18 million contract with the Bulls that to those of us who aren't millionaires might sound pretty nice, but in reality, many people consider one of the worst contracts in NBA history. Now, clearly Pippen signed it in order to secure a steady income for his family, but he would very soon come to regret it. In the years that followed, basketball grew in popularity and players' salaries skyrocketed. Not only that, but the Bulls went on to win multiple championships, which saw Pippen's individual value far exceed the measly 18 million he was due yet the Bulls refused to renegotiate his contract. So by 1997, he was one of the most underpaid players, if not the most underpaid player in the NBA. Though he was regarded a top five player in the league, he was only being paid the 122nd highest salary. Now this disparity in pay and worth resulted in a long and bitter conflict with Bulls management that was made even worse when it was revealed that the Bulls were actively engaged in conversations with other teams about trading him away. I wonder how you would have felt in this situation. Pippen felt angry. He felt taken advantage of. He felt taken for granted. And so when he needed to have surgery on his foot, he chose to make the Bulls pay. Rather than having the surgery in the summer so that he'd be ready to go by the start of the next season, Pippen put it off and put it off until the season was due to start and as a result the Bulls had to play the first two months of games without him. He said, and I quote from episode two, I'm not going to F my summer up to rehab for a season. They're not going to be looking forward to having me so I'm going to enjoy my summer and I'll use this season to prepare. This was the decision that led Jordan to accuse Pippen of being selfish, which, by the way, was easy enough for Jordan to say he was the highest paid player in the league. But it'd be a mistake to assume that Pippen's conflict with management was purely about money. It was about appreciation, validation, love. There's this psychologist by the name of Larry Crabb who says that as human beings, our deepest needs are for two things, security and significance. He says that everyone needs the security of being truly loved and at the same time, the significance of making a substantial lasting positive impact on another person. In other words, he says everyone needs to know that they're loved and that what they do matters. And through this lens, it's easy to see why Pippen was so hurt. It's hard to feel loved when others are trying to trade you away. And it's hard to feel like what you're doing matters when the organization you work for isn't prepared to pay you. Everyone is looking for security and significance. 
You see it in the person bouncing from one relationship to the next because they're afraid to be alone. Uh, You see it in the person obsessed with gaining more and more followers on social media because nothing's worth posting if enough people aren't watching. You see it in the marriage that fractures and falls apart because one or both partners feels unappreciated. Where is it that you find your security and significance? Is it in your appearance, the clothes that you wear, the haircut you have, the body you're sculpting? Is it in your achievements, the marks you get, the tries you score, the records you break? Is it in your image, your reputation? Does your security and significance come from being the smartest guy in the room, or the funniest guy in the room, or the nicest guy in the room, or the baddest guy in the room? Does it come from having rich parents, or cool friends, or a hot partner? Does it come from a thousand Instagram followers, or 10,000 YouTube subscribers? Does it come from being in the know or always being right? Of course, there's a problem with all the things I've just listed, and that is that they are unreliable sources of security and significance. They're too fragile, like spinning plates. If you get your security and significance from the way you look, well, then you'll be crushed whenever anyone says anything even slightly critical of your appearance. And if you get your security and significance from your academic or sporting achievements, you'll be devastated whenever somebody beats you. And if you get your security and significance from being the funniest guy in the room, you won't enjoy other people's jokes. You'll feel threatened by them. And you'll do everything you can to have the last laugh. See, that's the problem with finding your security and significance in these things. It's not just that they're fragile, it's that they depend so much on what other people think of us. And as long as that's the case, we'll try to control those around us, we'll try to use them and manipulate them into giving us what we want. And then when they don't give it to us, we'll lash out at them. Now one of the things that I love about the Christian faith is that it offers unique resources for security and significance. And that's because the Christian faith is all about God's unconditional love for us, his free gift of grace embodied in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. The Apostle Paul puts it this way, For it's by grace you've been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. See, if the Christian faith is right, if the grace of God is real, if the love of Jesus is real, then you won't find a greater security than that. If what the Bible says here is true, then Jesus loves us with a love we never deserved, a love that sees everything ugly within us and yet still accepts us, a love that we can do nothing to earn, which means it can never be lost, a love that was forever proven at the cross where Jesus' blood fully paid for all that condemns us in order to give us the free gift of an eternally loving relationship with our Creator. In that love, we can be fully secure. And when you grasp that, then you can live a life that is truly significant because you can stop manipulating people and start ministering to them, start caring for them, start looking out for their needs, not just the ways in which they can meet yours. Look at what Paul says in the very next verse. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. See, for the Christian, God has set out a path of good works for us to follow, not in order to earn the love of God, but rather in response to the love of God, sharing the love of God that's already been given to us in Jesus. Christians are people who recognize that their deep needs for security and significance have already been fully met in Jesus. So they're free to love those around them, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what they've done, regardless of what others might think of them. I thought it was nice when, following episode two of The Last Dance, the internet was flooded with Scotty Pippen appreciation posts. Everything from personal tributes to feature articles to artworks to memes. It was clear that lots of people felt for Scotty and that he still commands plenty of respect amongst basketball fans today. You might be interested to know that he did finally get paid when, in the summer of 1998, he signed a massive $67.2 million contract 
as part of a sign and trade deal between the Bulls and the Houston Rockets. And then he even got another 10 million from the Bulls in 2003 when he agreed to finish out his career in Chicago. But you know what? Even if he didn't get paid, even if there were no appreciation posts, even if no one remembered who he was, he would still be able to find security and significance in life because the grace of God and the love of Jesus would still be there for him just as it's there for you and me. The way to have your deepest needs met, the way to know you're truly and totally loved, the way to find meaning and purpose through serving others. I don't know if Scotty Pippen has taken up that offer, but will you take it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love for us and that it comes without condition, but as a free gift. So we ask that wherever we're at with you today, we pray that by your spirit, you'd enable us to grow in our understanding of how Jesus can meet our deepest needs for security and significance. And we pray this in part that we might be freed up to truly love others with the same unconditional love that you have shown us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.